Good day to you everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome back to the 1.18 survival series. I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. So, I'm starting this episode back in the bee dome with all of my bees. And I've got to say, I'm very happy that I've got this bee dome now because it supplied me with all of the honeycomb that I've needed to wax all of the copper in my world. And it's just great that I've been able to get that copper into its own little set, little oxidization stages or whatever. It's great. That's enough of the bees though. So disperse! Go back into your homes. Your purpose for this intro has been completed. Hi Hilda. How are you doing today? Still don't like me, I see. Maybe that'll change. Who knows. Now the first project that I want to do for this episode is I want to dig an actual route down to my skeleton spawner at the bottom of the world. Because at the moment, I've got this terrible route here. Let me just show you this real quick. Just go down this staircase, down towards the mega cave that I found, and I have to go all the way down that water elevator, or drop, and then down another staircase, and down another drop, and then through some caves, and it's just a bit of a nightmare. I have to find out a way of doing something that's much faster. And for that, I think we'll just have a hole going all the way from the surface down to here. Before I get to digging though, let me just repair my shovel real quick. Now at the bottom of our drop, I'm just going to place some stairs here and we'll have like a pool of water for me to land in. And just add the water. And then I'm also going to need a water elevator to take me back up to the surface as well. So I'll just dig two blocks into the center of the back here and this is going to be where we have our soul sand water elevator. I do need a hole going all the way from the bottom of the world to the surface though so let's kick start that time lapse I hope you enjoy everyone let's go. <laughs> And welcome back, that was only a short time lapse because I was very lucky. I actually had like massive caverns going all the way from the bottom to the surface here. So I didn't have to use as much durability on my pickaxes as I was worried that I might have to. So I think I got off pretty lucky here considering that I am now at the top of a mountain. Like that is a long way to dig. Oh, actually before I dig back down to the bottom though, let's just put some water there. And then that can be my way back out again. Excellent. So the water has fallen all the way down here, although I appear to have made a mistake and left a few blocks where they shouldn't have been. Let me just fix that real quick. There they are. The villainous blocks in question shall be destroyed. There we go. Wait. What? What happened to my water source? What? No, it wasn't supposed to go. Oh, I think it's turned to ice. Oh no! Ah, oh, no, no, no! <laughs> oh, this is so sad. This is tragic. I didn't put a torch at the top, and now I've got to deal with this. That's not good. Ow! Okay, let's just escape that skeleton real quick. <laughs> oh dear. Guess I'm not getting out that way just yet. So, I guess that means for one last time, I have to leave by the back exit. And then I have a very difficult journey back to the top of the mountain. I need like a proper path up to the top here. Like I do with the weapon sacrificial circle whatever thingy-majig. Let's just put a block there, break the ice, and now I have my water back and I'll just put a torch there to make sure it doesn't melt again. That's going to be the temporary solution. But for now, what I was hoping to do was to bone meal some kelp and make this a proper soul sand water elevator. So let's jump all the way to the bottom of our hole here. Oh, that's, uh, that's a scary ball. <laughs> I'm going to just place the kelp there and begin to bone meal it so that it reaches all the way to the surface of the world. Ah! I've summoned a glow squid. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and there we go. We now have a water elevator all the way up to the top of the mountain. Excellent. So uh, it's not exactly the cleanest looking drop at the moment. <laughs> I'll have to work on that maybe. And we're going down again. Oh, that's a scary fall, isn't it? Ah, oh, right. Get out of the way, glow squid. Why? Why did you do that? Just, just swim up. Swim up, and I won't have to kill you. Um. Okay. You failed. Anyway, soul sand time. And I can just place that there. And there we go. 
we now have our water elevator going all the way up to the top of our world. Although, if I'm getting caught on blocks like that, I might need to create like a nice glass tube or something to encase this water elevator in. Oh, here we are at the top. And now, let's just, uh, let's, let's fall. Oh, am I making you nervous? Is this scary for you? Well, don't you worry, folks. There's water at the bottom. <laughs> oh, hello there, Rosemary. I would like to build a glass elevator. And unfortunately, I have no glass. So we're going out to the beach once again. And we're going to harvest some sand. Let's go, Rosemary. Ah, I've come across a bit of an obstacle here. Luckily for me, though, I have leads. Come with me, Rosemary. We can cross this river. I don't have to ride you across it. <laughs> here we go at the beach. And I think I'm just going to harvest as much sand here as I possibly can. And I'll take it back with me to be smelted. And there we go. I've harvested as much of the sand as I think I could probably take. Although I've missed a block just there. I should probably go and pick that up. But as you can see, plenty of sand. Hopefully this will take me all the way from the bottom of the world to the surface at the top of the mountain. Just fine. Ah, uh, here we are, Rosemary. We're back at the base. And I think let's just take all of this sand out now. And we'll try and distribute it evenly throughout our smeltery here. And while we wait for that to smelt, I realized that I didn't actually wax the skeleton spawner room down here. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. There we go. Ah, this should be enough glass to at least get started. And I can just create a nice little glass tube for the water elevator to be situated within. This might be a problem. Uh, zombies, do you mind, like, leaving? I can't really deal with you because there are other mobs here as well. And I don't want to invite them all in as well. So, uh, how am I going to get around this? I think if I could just hit him out there... Okay, there we go. Excellent. He's missed that step at least. And then I can just finish this part of the tube here. Hopefully without mobs shooting at me. And then just need to finish this bit off here. And then that will be the glass tube completed. There we go. Excellent. We're done. Um, oh, ow. Ow. That was close. Um, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. Um, yes, shoot the, shoot the zombie skeleton. Uh... Okay, we've got to be smart about this. <laughs> I've turned this from a 1v3 to a 3v1. Yes, let me regenerate. Okay, so Mr. Skeleton, it's my turn. You face me now. And you have failed to kill me. Not even close. Better luck next time. And just to finish off our elevator, just add some fence gates just there. And then that should stop the water from flowing. And that's our great glass elevator done. And of course, that means that I can ride it all the way from the bottom of the world to the top. And I've got to say, we've got some very dramatic scenery on the way up. All of these huge caverns that we pass through. Oh, it's so cool. I, I just wish that I had the time in this world to build like some giant fossils or something around the glass tube there. It would be so cool. <laughs> I've got to say, though, it looks very eerie from within. Everything looks so blue and so faded. It's so cool, though. This is a very cool effect. At the moment, though, this is just a hole in the ground, and I would prefer that it would not be so. So, let's kickstart that time lapse because I need a build here. Let's get straight into it. Welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. We've just done a very simple, like, gazebo-y type-ish build here. It's not really a gazebo. Is it a gazebo? It's a thing, alright? It's a thing to house my water elevator and the drop of doom. I thought it would be a good idea to try and stick with the style that I've been doing with the rest of the valley up here. So, I've been trying to do that as much as possible. I also decided to construct a little bit of a path here. So it's not quite so difficult to get up there. And I also added some lanterns to the side of the paths as well. In the hopes that it would melt some of the snow. 
it hasn't really done that. The the light, the heat of the light doesn't really extend far enough. This block here is light level 11, and that's just it's it's too low. I need a, like a hotter light source. Oh no, I've melted the wrong things. Oh dear. And I quite liked the way that I had natural light flowing down this hole of doom as well. So, what I did to keep that is I added a wall at the top of the middle just to the roof there. And that allows us to keep our natural light for the hole. I've got to say though, I'm very happy with the fact that this is my way down to the skeleton spawner now. I just jumped down a hole and I get some very scary and impressive views going down. And then I'm there in about 10 seconds or so. Or even less, although maybe it'll be more if I have to climb to the top of the mountain, but it's faster than it was before. This is not the only project that I have planned for today. You've probably already seen it in the thumbnail or the title of the video, and that is the fact that I am finally going to get started on building ourselves an airship for this world. That's one of the things I was hoping to build quite a few of in this series. Like, I wanted to have, like, a fleet of airships here, uh, like over that mountain or something, um, just dotted around here and there. And this city that I was building here was supposed to be like a, a merchant's trading area kind of place. I don't really know how to describe it other than that. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a big place and there's going to be lots of things to buy and sell and I need airships for that. And I think with it for our first one, we're going to have it out over the bottom of our valley just here. I don't really know where else I'd like to put one at the moment. So, let's get started with that time lapse everyone, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> And welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I now have the first airship of this survival world and I've got to say I think it looks great. <laughs> it looks just the way that I was hoping it would. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it's got a giant wool balloon and it's got a little cabin hanging beneath it attached to the bottom there. And I, I'm gonna—I'm not gonna lie. I was actually thinking about making an airship my starter base for this world, but then I was when I was looking at all the wool that I might need, I was thinking, no Whistler, slow down, all right, get there in time. And I, we also got this uh, this rope ladder going all the way up to the door there, and that's how I get in and out at the moment because, as you all know, I do not have an elytra. <laughs> so we've still got this old ladder here. That's where I was keeping all of my resources for this build. And this is the new official ladder going all the way to the airship itself. And then just like that, I can step inside. Isn't that great? <laughs> now, I haven't really done a proper interior just yet. Although, I don't really know how much I can do in here at the moment. I could probably add some plants or something. I know that I was planning to have, like, beds in front of this window. And I've got to say... This is a fantastic view <laughs> of the valley over there, and I've got a good view out of the, the cockpit here as well. Just look at my little town here. It's It looks like a new world, and I've got to say it's, it is a new world, but hopefully I can develop this over time and make it look more finished. I've got a view out of the back as well and the sides of the airship. I can see in pretty much every direction, and that's pretty great. And I've used smithing tables for the ceiling of our little cabin here. It's got like a really cool pattern to it. As you can see there, and I can use it if I ever get netherite. <laughs> and here, I like to think of this as a like a, a nice little sitting area. I could sit here and read a book while I was flying away on my adventures or something. I've got a crafting table here, which is going to be useful for now. Because I'm going to build three beds and place them just here. There we go. A nice triple bed for the captain of this airship. Because they deserve it. And then at the cockpit over here, I think it'd be really cool if we had like controls. So I've got some redstone components here. So let's just put down a lever, comparator, and a repeater. And there we go. I can feel like I'm flying the airship. Oh yeah. 
Captain Whistler, I like the sound of that. <laughs> mm. uh, I feel like a child all over again, just pressing buttons and oh, that's so cool. And if I just dig up, I can show you that I've actually got a decent amount of space in the balloon itself. And I'm not really sure if I should put anything in here. Like, what do you think? Should I put like a farm or something in here or something else? I'm not really quite sure at the moment. I'm not really too convinced that I need something up here because like it's supposed to be a balloon filled with a very light gas and I, I don't know if there should be something in here. It's not really a, uh, a realistic scenario. <laughs> but the thing about Minecraft is that you can take some creative liberties. So if anyone has some good suggestions, feel free to let me know. Oh, just look at that sunset though. Can just watch it from the back of our airship. Beautiful. I've always loved the sunsets in this game. They look so good. I don't really need these resources in this chest anymore, so let's just move them back to where they came from. We'll be able to get rid of the chests that way. Say no to chest monsters, everyone. Your world does not deserve it. And I know that that's very hypocritical of me, because I have quite a few chest monsters in my hardcore world. In fact, I, I think I'm building them in this world as well. They're just quite sparse and spread out, but it's, it's quite bad. I need a storage building. <laughs> and because that chest of resources is now gone, I can now get rid of this old ladder as well. There we go. And you might have noticed out of the corner of my screen at some point, this bit of blue ice and some soul soil. And what this was for was it was supposed to be a temporary way for me to get basalt. Ah. I, I didn't mean to fall down a block there, and now I've lost my lava. Ah, oh, this all gone wrong. I just wanted to demonstrate. Ah, oh, right. Anyway, I just wanted a few blocks of basalt for the airship build. That was all. Ah, uh, grumble, grumble, mumble, grumble. There we go. I've got my lava back. But yeah, as you can see in the middle of the propeller at the back there. In fact, let me just zoom in with the spyglass. I have some basalt. And I think I've got like four blocks total as like the the main propeller like strut thing. And yeah, I, I just needed the basalt. And that's why I made a very small basalt generator for. As much as I would like to be the captain of that airship though, I'm afraid that I have something else in mind. Oh, no, I didn't mean to fall just then. Um, I would like to have a primary occupant for this thing. One who will never leave. That is our giant staircase done. Now I just need a willing victim. Sorry, a, a willing resident. <laughs> and the resident in question is going to be a villager. And you might be thinking, but Whistler, you've got a door here. They'll be able to run out and die or something. And that's actually a trick to do with the door. You hear those door sounds, the opening and closing sounds? They're reversed. So I have placed this door so that when it is open, it is closed. And when it is closed, it is open. And that, like changes how mobs treat the door and when it's open mobs won't try to pathfind through it so if i put a villager into this airship he will not be able to escape now then to find myself a willing victim <coughs> i mean resident hello is anyone here hello sheep uh is anyone still alive i don't see anyone <laughs> ah I think uh, there must have been a snowstorm or something here and all of the villagers died and piled of snow. Yeah, that's how it happened. So, you sir, you are being promoted from the dirt box in the side of a hill to captain of my first airship. This is a very grand promotion and I know that you will love it. And the fact that you can't resist me is, uh, well, I know you'll love the idea. You can't help but follow me. I have full control over your thoughts with this very fletching table. Now, my good sir, I just want you to not fall from this staircase. Okay? Is that alright? Is that something we can agree to? Oh, it better be. Oh, I think he's found a bed. He's going up because it's it's just about to turn night time. I think he's found the bed within the airship itself. Yes, he has! Excellent. Now you're stuck in there forever. And that means that I can remove this staircase. Oh, hello zombie. Are you gonna follow me up by any chance? No, okay. Good, good. That's very good. 
stay down there where you belong. Ah, hello sir. How are you doing? Is the bed comfy? Yeah, you like that side of the bed? Okay, okay, I won't judge. Um, right then, I want to have him be primarily at the cockpit. I just really think that would be super cool if he's going to go to his workstation here at the cockpit. It's going to look like he's at the controls and I'll be able to see him from outside of the airship. So, are you going to take your, your job? I mean, you've already got your job, but you're going to take your workstation. Yeah, you're going to work? No, you're going to go to the opposite side of the airship? Okay, I think he's just exploring his area, really. And yeah, there we go. We're demonstrating that you can't go through that door. Or at least, I don't think he can. Yeah, he's just closed it. <laughs> now he can't pathfind through that block because it's closed. <laughs> And I've got to say, I quite like the roll of the fletching table that I've got here. It looks like it's got a giant big red button that must never ever be pressed. Like a giant self-destruct button or something. And uh, maybe it's not a good place to have at like uh, foot level. But this villager and I can't press a big self-destruct button on the fletching table anyway. So, who cares? Oh, is he going? He's got it! He's taken the workstation as his own. Now, are you going to work? don't think you've actually made the noise yet. Are you going to do it? Make the noise. There it is. My job here is done. Now, can I see him? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's at the helm. He's at the cockpit. He's taking control. He's looking at his maps and his instruments. Then he's going, hmm, yes, this is a good course. Oh, our captain. Isn't he magnificent? And I have to say, I don't really have a name for him at the moment. So if you have any suggestions for our brand new captain of the airship, feel free to let me know. If I like your suggestion, I'll be sure to name it after that. I've got to say though, I'm very happy with how this airship has turned out. What do you think? It's super cool, right? <laughs> Speaking of name suggestions though, I asked you all in the last episode of this series for a name suggestion for the new witch in town. And I had a couple of good ones, and I think the one that I will go for is Mildred. Mildred the witch, after the worst witch, and that's not something I have watched, but I like the suggestion anyway. So thanks very much for that, eh Nomi? I'm afraid that that's going to have to be the end of the episode though. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thanks for watching.